This video is going to walk us through some of the bond calculations that we do in class. Depending on the time it takes me to work through this, it might be one video or it might be split into a couple videos. YouTube has a 10 minute time limit at the time I'm recording and posting these up on YouTube. So if we exceed 10 minutes, it'll be broken down into multiple parts. But there are four basic bond pricing problems that we're going to encounter. The first is a pricing of an ordinary bond. Next we have yield to maturity and yield to call situations for an ordinary bond. And then we'll also introduce the idea of a zero coupon bond in this class. And so I want to walk through the calculation of bond pricing with a zero coupon bond. Let's start with the first case, the bond pricing problem for an ordinary bond. In this problem, you are considering the purchase of a 10-year 5.5% coupon bond with a 7.1% required return. We want to know what the value of this bond is right now. Whenever we do bond pricing, what we want to think of is we're purchasing a set of cash flows. So we need to A, forecast what those cash flows are, B, choose an appropriate discount rate, and then C, solve for the present value of those cash flows. Now, in real world situations with bond pricing, probably the biggest challenge of those steps is B, choosing the appropriate discount rate. In order to determine the appropriate discount rate, you need to consider how risky the bond is, you need to consider expected inflation, what other interest rates are at the current point in time. Lots of different factors go into determining exactly what the appropriate required return is. We're going to talk about some of those things in Chapter 3 when we look at the financial system and interest rates. But really, in order to get good at determining an appropriate required return, you need to develop a lot more knowledge of finance beyond this business finance course. Hopefully by the time, if you're a finance major, by the time you're done with the major, you'd have a little bit better idea. But it goes beyond just the academic training and into some real world practice. In order to get good at determining that required return, it requires a little bit of seasoning practice going through doing it in real world scenarios. And I would argue that this is the key to becoming a successful bond investor. The better you can do at determining what that appropriate discount rate or required return is, the more successful you're going to be as a professional bond investor. That's where they get their edge. That being said, let's focus now on solving the problem. In class, the required return for our bond pricing problems will always be given, so you don't have to worry about determining what it should be that's going to be provided for us. So we said the first thing we need to do is forecast the cash flows. Now bonds are easy because bonds have a fixed time horizon. This bond is going to mature in 10 years, so we know we're going to be receiving cash flows for 10 years. They also have a fixed coupon payment, our cash flow each year. Cash flow each year is based on this coupon rate. The 5.5% coupon tells us that each year we're going to receive 5.5% of the par value in coupon payments. Now, a lot of times bonds will split that coupon payment into two semi annual payments, and that's what we're going to do in this class. We're going to assume bonds pay interest semi annually, so that $55 per year is going to break down to $27.50 every six months. So now we know what the cash flows are each period. We know how long we're going to receive them. There's one more cash flow and that's at maturity. Bonds, when they mature, return the par value to their investors. Par value is $1,000. So that's going to be returned to investors at the end of the 10th year once the bond matures. So if we want to look at a timeline for this bond, We have a 10 year time horizon. Our required return is 7.1%. Each year we're going to receive $55. 
but we said that's going to be split semi-annually so we're going to get two payments each year 55 divided by 2 is 27.50 so each year we're going to get $27 each six months we're going to get $27.50 all the way through to the end of year 10. Then at the end of year 10 we're going to get our last $27.50 and we're going to get $1,000. That's the par value or maturity value which gets returned to us at the end of the bond's life. Now what we want to do is move from this timeline and set it up into a five key approach. So we've got our timeline here we want to convert that to our financial calculator. First thing is because the bond pays semi-annual, we have two periods per year. So you want to set your calculator to two periods per year. And then you can just start with your five key approach. So once your calculator is set to two periods per year, you have your five keys, your N, your I slash Y, PV, PMT and FV. Now I'm going to walk through this problem on my HP 10B, but regardless of which calculator you're using, you should be comfortable with your five key approach at this point. So you need to start by setting your periods per year to two and then use the five key approach on your calculator. Because we have two periods per year, 10 years is actually 20 semi-annual time periods. The interest rate is that required return or discount rate that we talked about earlier. So that's 7.1% for our interest rate. The present value is what we're solving for. We want to know what the bond is worth today, so we're solving for that PV. The payment is the annuity. That annuity is the $27.50 each six months that we're going to receive. So that's $27.50 for our payment. And the future value is the $1,000 par value. So now we plug these into our financial calculator. And note that the payment and the future value are both positive here. That's because as a bond investor, you're going to pay money today to buy this bond. And in exchange for that money you give up today, you're going to receive that coupon payment every six months. So your payment is positive, it's coming to you, and you're going to receive the $1,000 at, matur at maturity. It's positive, so it's coming to you. So now we get out our financial calculator. I want to start by setting my periods per year to two. So I do two, set that into my periods per year. Again, that procedure might be a little different depending if what calculator you're using. But the key is we start with two periods per year. Once our calculator is set to two periods per year, we're going to use our five key approach. My N was 20. So I just plug that into my N. My interest rate is 7.1%. Just plug that into my interest per year. Present value is what I'm solving for, so skip over for that, that for now. $27.50 is my payment. And $1,000 is my future value. Once those are all into my calculator, to solve for my present value, we get an answer of $886.81. Now that answer came out as negative on our financial calculator because we're paying that today. It's a cash outflow. We don't need to write the negative down in our answer because we're saying what's the value of the bond. It's worth $886. If we were to sell it, it's going to cost us $886.81 if we're going to buy it. So we don't need that negative sign, but the calculator uses that negative in order to show you whether it's a cash inflow or a cash outflow since our payment and future value were inflows, the present value was an outflow.